Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be welcoming you to the first online Ocean Literacy Summit organized on the occasion of World Oceans Day 2020. Today we celebrate our ocean, which is home to remarkable biodiversity. It is the defining physical feature of this planet and the regulator of the Earth's climate. 2020 was poised to be a major year for the ocean. A major United Nations Ocean Conference was set to gather the global ocean community in June. A much-awaited climate conference of parties was expected to bring the ocean climate nexus back into the limelight. Another key conference of parties was due to establish the next global targets for the protection of bio biological diversity. Much like COVID-19, the challenges facing the ocean do not respect borders. Left unchecked, ocean acidification, marine pollution, sea level rise and low oxygen dead zones could have harmful effects, not just in terms of global climate change, but also on the billions of people who depend on the ocean for their food and livelihoods. In the face of COVID-19, World Ocean Days 2020 is key to relying the global ocean community, strengthening international collaboration and maintaining momentum for decisive and innovative action. This is particularly important as we move towards the launch of the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development next January. The Ocean Decade is a unique opportunity to shape a global framework for ocean actors from all countries, disciplines, generations and sectors to generate and use ocean science for transformative change. But innovation and action can only happen when knowledge is available to everyone. This is the essence of ocean literacy, sharing knowledge to drive action. In the words of oceanographer Sylvia Earle, far and away the biggest threat to the ocean is ignorance. Improvements in ocean literacy are key to sustain innovative approaches to the management of the ocean. This challenge requires the creation of partnerships and networks among UN entities and governmental, non-governmental and international organizations using strategies that go far beyond conventional policy making. But it also requires the empowerment of communities, network of business leaders, industry, universities, research center, civil society at large to share responsibility for addressing urgent threats. For many years now, UNESCO has helped develop ocean knowledge and awareness through the work of the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, which was established 60 years ago. The IOC monitors the impact of climate change on oceans, supports progress in scientific cooperation and knowledge. Thanks to its Ocean Biodiversity Information System, it is the leading source of data on the movement of marine species around the world. By assessing changes, it helps prepare coastal communities and small island developing states for future flood risks. Today, it's the first ever online Ocean Literacy Summit, which gathers ocean experts, um, educators, artists, scientists, businesses, uh, people of sports, policy makers. And it is, I believe, a tremendous occasion to contribute to this challenge and to celebrate World Oceans Day. Excellencies, dear friends, we cannot miss this opportunity for today's generation and for the generations to come. It's our responsibility. As French poet Charles Baudelaire wrote, the sea is our mirror in which we contemplate our soul. Homme libre, toujours tu chériras la mer. La mer est ton miroir, tu contemples ton âme. And on those words, I wish you an excellent summit.